Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. Joining me here today is Hafsa from IBM. Hafsa, say hi. Hi, uh, my name is Hafsa Ali. I'm a product manager for DB2 at IBM. Right, we're going to spend a couple of minutes talking about IBM databases, specifically migrations into AWS and a couple of the options that are around there. Uh, a lot of poking. Uh, Hafsa, I have got customers who have long-running investments in terms of uh, IBM database solutions, most of them existing uh, in, in an on-premises context. Uh, these are uh, sort of workloads like IBM DB2. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there might be uh, some large analytical platforms where we see IBM DB2 Warehouse. DB2 warehouse. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, Warehouse is never alone. Uh, we've always got the cousin. The teaser. And then, of course, if you're moving data in and around these, you've probably got an ETL solution. So we're going to have IBM Data Stage in there as well. Uh, for most of the customers I'm working with, these environments are potentially entrenched. They've been working with them for many years. There's huge amounts of data here. Uh, but as those customers start adopting the cloud and AWS as part of their overall modernization strategy, uh, they're, they're bringing these investments into the cloud or they're moving huge amounts of data from those investments into the cloud. This is nothing new. We, for quite a while, have had... Um, Amazon EC2, where the uh, customer has been able to run DB2 as an example. Uh, they're bringing their existing licensing, deploying the software, running that over there. Can we spend a moment or two and zoom in just on DB2? We'll ignore warehouse and the tease and data stage for a moment. Uh, recently, we've done some fun stuff together where we've brought a much more managed option to DB2 customers on AWS. Run us through that. That's correct, Ryan. Recently, we launched Amazon RDS for DB2. So RDS for DB2 allows you, oh, RDS for DB2 <laughs> allows you uh, to fully manage, scale, and operate your DB2 database in the cloud. This is RDS, like every other flavor. Uh, it's fully managed service. We do all of the undifferentiated heavy lifting, allowing the customer to focus on what's important to them, which is the database. Uh, in this case, we've just brought the DB2 engine into the fold. Uh, customers with existing DB2 licensing, whether they've got that through an ELA or they've bought that as part of a bundled solution, they can bring that licensing construct directly to RDS. Am I correct in saying that? That's correct. Um, what about customers who don't have existing licensing? So customers that don't have an existing license can get RDS for DB2 on the AWS marketplace on a consumption-based model uh, built hourly. Okay, that is fantastic. A lot of options over here. Next question is obviously if I have an existing investment and I want to take advantage of RDS, how do I, how do I migrate into DB2 for RDS? Well, that depends, Ryan. Is this a one-time migration or a continuous migration? Ah, it's a very tricky question. Okay, so <laughs> fair point. Uh, what we do have is some customers are, let's say for argument's sake, in a data center exit strategy and they're leaving behind this environment. Uh, maybe that's on-premises, maybe that's another cloud provider, and they're gonna move into something like RDS for DB2 and then discard where they were coming from. Uh, that could be a once-off migration. Uh, that once-off migration could very well have multiple phases where it's too large to do in literally one step. So we would back up or find some way of migrating the bulk of the database into AWS and then capture the changes or the transactions that were, were missed out during that backup process, if we're trying not to be disruptive to the organization. So both of those phases could be a one sort of thing done and dusted. Uh, then we could have a more continuous approach where we're more likely migrating the data itself, not the actual database, where this stays here, it continues to live here, but we're continuously moving the data into AWS because maybe I've got a much broader data fabric strategy there 
or I've got something like AIML workloads, or you know, th th there's a density of things on AWS that is making that data required there, but I'm not entirely replacing this. I'm assuming we're gonna end up with some things that lend themselves better to continuous or a once-off migration. Definitely, yep. Okay. Let's start with... Um, Backup and restore? Oh, okay, you wanna go old school, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, traditional database level backup and restore. I'm of the opinion, if I'm wearing a database admin hat, that this is something that is, one, familiar to people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's something that is potentially easy to, or that they're familiar with it, and that with that familiar, familiarity comes a bit of ease. Yep. Uh, the assumption here is database admin knows how to do this because of their broader disaster recovery strategy. Mm -hmm. I'm not a fan of it from a, a migration perspective. It could be effective if this is a relatively small database workload. Um, what I like about Backup and Restore is it backs up typically a lot of the components that would be left behind with a traditional migration. Things like customization, stored procedures, they get backed up as well and replayed. The, the big concern I have with the Backup and Restore process is we need to be cognizant of the customer's over environment. Um, maintenance windows, how long does it take to backup? Uh, typically we'd need to copy the backup from here uh, into AWS that might facilitate moving it to something like Amazon S3 as a, as a temporary storage location. Then we'd have to replay that backup uh, into our, our RDS for DB2 uh, in, environment. Uh, other challenges might include connectivity between these two environments. How long does it take me to transfer that backup in some cases, I've seen us ship something like a Snowball device to the customer. We back the, uh, onto Snowball, ship the Snowball back, replay it. That may or may not be feasible for a customer in terms of an impact and outage perspective. What about uh, native replication? And I, and I think there's two versions here. It's the, the native replication in the database in itself things like, like shipping of logs, things like actual replication. IBM also has something called Q, yep. Q replication. Q replication, yep. Native replication and Q replication. So native replication is definitely doable. Um, and I see native replication and, and potentially Q replicate as well being a good fit for continuous replication, where, where changes are happening here and that replication is being replayed, uh, lends itself very nicely to DR processes where, you know, making changes here, replicating those changes over there. If something fails over here, I can bring this up online. Q replication, however, is a little bit more nuanced. For those of you who don't know, Q replication is a, a technology that takes advantage of IBM's MQ as a queuing system. Mm -hmm. So it pulls the information from the transaction log of the database over here into an IBM MQ queue. And this opens the door into application workloads and other things that could interact with a queuing system to pull that information and potentially use it in a different way or write it to different storage. And, and that's a capability that none of the other options that we've discussed so far have as a, as a capability. That's, that's a really exciting diversification in terms of a broader uh, data fabric context. But again, I don't feel that those are really purpose-built for migrations. Let, let's zoom in on migrations for a second. Hafsa, what have we got in terms of tools that are migration-specific one way or the other, whether it's continuous or um, a one source? Well, an option for a tool that you have is AWS DMS, a database migration service. Do you want to pop that up here? Mm -hmm. So DMS is, is actually very attractive for a couple of reasons. The first thing is... AWS has invested a lot of effort into building out the database migration service to ensure that it is an effective tool to help customers move into all of the flavors of RDS. So in this case, DB2 being included in that. So great for reading from DMA, uh, DB2 over here and, and writing into a RDS for DB2. It also caters for 
once-off migrations, whether that is single phase or multi-phase, so it can do a bulk load of the data into the environment and then do tra transaction logs as well. But it also has the ability to cater for continuous replication for those use cases where there's an environment that's going to persist here and we're going to replicate that data into the environment. It is an additional AWS service, so you're paying a, a fee for that. And um, you can just go to the AWS console and, and spin up DMS, link it to your source, link it to your destinations. IBM have created a, keep me honest here, it's a toolkit that was purpose built for customers to migrate into DB2 for RDS. Uh, yep. DB2 migration tool. Migration tool. Yes. Yeah, so DB2 migration tool um, is a command line tool that allows for a simplified, optimized, and a direct process for migrating DB2 on premise workload to Amazon RDS. This tool, like Ryan said, was purpose built specifically for migration to Amazon RDS for DB2. And it's optimized for transfers of large amounts of data. And it supports many types of migrations, including air gapped environments, big Indian, little Indian, via backup and restore, uh, via DB2 look, export and load. So this DB2 MT is a completely free tool now available on GitHub. We'll include a description, we'll include a link in the description below. So uh, there's a couple of things I want to zoom in on there. Uh, it, it caters for a lot of the functions we've listed above. So it can do uh, once-off migrations. It potentially can deal with certain use cases for continuous migration. Uh, it, it, if you want to go the backup and restore approach, so whether this is an offline, take the entire environment down and move it that way, or whether you want to keep things online and move them, you can do both of those is, is how I'm understanding this. Yep, that's correct. Right. I love the fact that this is a free tool. Uh, I love the fact that we're going to pop a link into the description below. A lot of the customers that I'm working with uh, as part of their data fabric are, are utilizing IBM Data Stage mm -hmm. as an ETL tool. What are your thoughts around Data Stage in this context? So Data Stage is a fantastic ETL, ETL tool, but there may be better options for migrations, specifically for very large migrations. All right, so what I'm hearing is fit for purpose, use an ETL tool for ETL functions, yep. use a migration tool for migrations. Yep. Sounds like we're gravitating back to these two over here, like whether it's DMS or whether it is the DB2 migration tool. What about uh, customers where they want to write the data out of here into this environment, but they want to be able to interact with this environment while the data is being continuously replicated? Are there any considerations around uh, DMS or the migration tool around those? So AWS DMS would be the more um, ideal tool to use for that use case. Okay, so it, it can read from here, write in there, and we can have users interacting with that data. Mm -hmm. The DB2 migration tool uh, does allow for continuous replication, but it does it in a way that the database or the target is in a constantly restoring state. And because of that, the end user over here cannot interact with that data while we're continuously writing. So great for a continuous replication in a DR context, but if you have a requirement for continuous replication and interaction with the database at the same time, this might not be the best fit for you. You might be considering something like DMS instead. Hafsa, talk to me about much more detailed, granular steps, the how-to nuts and bolts. What have we got going there? Well, we have an upcoming blog um, very soon about migrations to Amazon RDS for DB2. So With all of the caveats, considerations, spiked pits, it's going to be fun. So what we'll do is we'll put a link to that in the description below. Uh, have we missed out on anything? I think we've covered it quite well. Well, in that case, thank you very much. It's always, always a pleasure having you here. All right. Thank you so much, Ryan, for having me. And thank you for joining us.